Baby Yoda isn't just adorable. The character is an absolute stroke of genius, and in this video, we are going to talk about all the reasons why Baby Yoda is the perfect co-pilot for Mando. To give your eyes something to do while we talk, I'm going to show you how I made this tribute to the stars of The Mandalorian. Welcome to Goobertown Hobbies. Please make sure you're subscribed and enjoy the show. So I'm going to talk about why I think Baby Yoda is a stroke of genius. And on the screen, I'm going to be working on a 3D printed tribute to Baby Yoda and the Mandalorian, circa episode 2. Longer 3D sent me this Orange 30 resin printer to test, so let's unbox it and put it to work. Baby Yoda does so much for the plot, the characters, and the theme of the Mandalorian show. Reason 1 why Baby Yoda is so good. What an incredible hook for the show. The Mandalorian is sent to hunt down a bounty, and he finds a cradle with what can only be described as Baby Yoda. It turns out that Imperial Remnants and a guild full of bounty hunters are looking for this cutie. This raises a whole bunch of awesome questions, and it draws us right into the action. Baby Yoda's existence and the hunt for him set the stage for so many mysteries. And they're mysteries that we care about. Part of the reason we're calling the child Baby Yoda is that we don't even know the name for Master Yoda's species. Master Yoda was always mysterious, the wise sage. Yoda taught us all a little bit about the Force, but there was always so much that Yoda knew and we didn't. I'm hoping that Baby Yoda helps us to learn some of Master Yoda's secrets. Where does this species come from, and how many of them are there? Are they all Force sensitive? Is Baby Yoda even a he, or do we have more of a Baby Yaddle situation? The point is, this character adds so many interesting questions and possible story arcs to the show. One big one already, why are Imperial Remnants searching for Baby Yoda? As far as story hooks go, I find myself also asking questions about how helpless this little buddy actually is. He's 50 years old and he's in a crib. How much did he learn in those 50 years? Is he wiser than he looks? He appears to be cute and childlike, but every once in a while he shows incredible agency. When we first met Master Yoda in The Empire Strikes Back, he was pretending to be less than he really was in order to test Luke. Not that Baby Yoda is testing anybody, but there are some hints that he is more than he seems. He clearly has the Force, but I wonder what else is hiding behind those dazzling eyes. In episode 4, he took a comical slurp of bone broth soup that stopped a fight between two characters. That also spawned dozens of memes. Was that noisy slurp lucky timing, or was it intentional? His cuteness has certainly caused some characters to care for him. Is he aware of this? Is Baby Yoda manipulating people? What if he's using his cuteness plus a bit of a force trick to hitch a ride with Mando? I need to know more about Baby Yoda. He's grabbed my attention, and he's got me to pull out my wallet for Disney+. Plus. Well done, little buddy. Alright, number two on the list of why this character is awesome. As a plot device, Baby Yoda is possibly the best MacGuffin ever. That cutie in his floating crib is what everybody in the galaxy seems to be after, and his very existence is driving the story along. In A New Hope, R2-D2 was a high-quality MacGuffin. Finding R2-D2 was important because he had the Death Star plans. R2-D2 and the plans inside his rusty memory banks drove the story. Plus, R2-D2 even doubled as comic relief. The audience really cared about the fate of that spunky droid. The importance of the Death Star plans made total sense in the movie, and it brought everything to an epic conclusion. Not bad, not bad, but I'm gonna say that Baby Yoda is better. Baby Yoda is an epic MacGuffin. On a basic level, everybody is after him, and his mere presence keeps the plot moving along. All the mercenaries and bounty hunters in the galaxy seem to have a tracking fob that leads them straight to Baby Yoda. Now, that doesn't exactly make sense, and I bet those fobs will never be explained, but they don't need to be. As a plot device, they do their job. They're dousing rods that lead the bad guys to the MacGuffin. Classic. Baby Yoda is at least as cute and funny as R2-D2, but he goes above and beyond because of the mystery that he holds. What is his importance to the bad guys in this story? I think that there are going to be some fascinating answers to that question. I think Baby Yoda holds more interesting secrets than just some blueprints. 
Most importantly, the audience believes that the mysteries of Baby Yoda are valuable, and we really, really want to know what they are. Point number three, the silent co-pilot, the tiny green Chewbacca. Several of the points on this list of why Baby Yoda is awesome of course deal with how Baby Yoda interacts with the character of the Mandalorian, but let's start here. We've got an alien who sits in the co-pilot seat who doesn't speak the common tongue. He sits there quietly and he gives Mando someone to talk to. This point is simple, but I think it's really important. Mando wears his helmet all the time, and his character archetype is that of a loner. For the showrunners, this is a bit of a challenge. It's really hard to learn anything about a helmeted character who spends a lot of their time sitting alone in his spaceship. But when a child sitting next to Mando starts pressing buttons, we can see how Mando reacts and learn more about who he really is. That helmet that Mando wears is cool, but the writers need all the help they can get to convey Mando's character through his mask. Baby Yoda gives Mando a character to interact with while still being sort of alone. There are some real similarities to Chewbacca here. Han Solo is supposed to be the ultimate loner. His last name is literally Solo. But then we have the fact that Han pretty much always has his co-pilot by his side. Chewie is involved in almost everything that Han does, but he's not quite a full character. If we subtract Chewbacca from the movies, the biggest difference is that we don't get to know Han quite as well. In A New Hope, when the fighter pilots are heading to their ships and Han is packing up his cash reward, Chewie goes Rawr, and Han says, I know what I'm doing, but he sounds a bit conflicted. That line sets up the last phase of Han's character arc and the climax of the movie. A non-verbal co-pilot lets Han and Mando remain loners, but it gives them someone to interact with in front of the camera, giving us a window into their character. They're loners, but they're not completely alone. Number 4, and here's a big one. Baby Yoda is a major part of Mando's character arc. Mando starts the show as a hardened bounty hunter, and somehow ends up on the path towards being a guardian. Mando is pretty ruthless in his hunting, even when his quarry seems to be a sympathetic type. But he's probably never had to hunt a baby before. Over the course of the first few episodes, that cuteness and helplessness seems to unlock something in our title character and some protective, selfless instincts seem to kick in. Early in the show, we see Mando start to choose the child's well-being over profits, over his place in the Bounty Hunters Guild, over his own safety, and even over the sanctity of his word. Mando chooses to become an outlaw of outlaws in order to protect Baby Yoda. He takes on the role of a guardian, and he starts putting his skills to work towards new aims. Mando's story arc is off to a really interesting start. We get glimpses of flashbacks implying that Mando himself was an orphan, and it seems likely that Baby Yoda will be used to bring out Mando's backstory and to show us his whole journey. As these two keep traveling the galaxy together, I have no doubt that we'll learn more and more about them, and they'll continue to influence each other in interesting and adorable ways. I'm really looking forward to see where this all goes. Alright, Reason 5. Baby Yoda serves as a moral center for the story. This adventure is set in the rough and tumble outer rim of the galaxy with mercenaries and outlaws. There's a lot of filth and brutality. In the first episode alone, a lot of characters get shot with blasters. One mercenary gets cut in half with a sliding door, and the sound effect that goes with that? Wow. We also see Sarlacious Crumb's brother sitting in a cage, watching in horror as Sarlacious Crumb's other brother gets cooked on a spit. That was pretty dark. That was really dark. The showrunners could have easily gone in a direction that made this an incredibly dark and depressing series. Enter Baby Yoda. He's comic relief and cuteness relief. He's innocence and goodness all in one adorable green bundle. He's out there representing the light side of the force. He serves as an anchor point for everything happy and wholesome. Baby Yoda doesn't just keep us from getting depressed, he gives the show permission to dabble in a wide range of emotions, which also lets us feel each emotion more keenly. It's a brutal and dangerous galaxy, but the galaxy is also home to adorable Baby Yoda. The highs are high, the lows are low, and that gives the show a ton to work with. Reason number six why Baby Yoda is a perfect co-pilot for the Mandalorian. 
Baby Yoda adds vulnerability and stakes to the show. One of the problems with a character like the Mandalorian is that he's set up to be tougher and more competent than almost anyone else in the world around him. We see Mando get shot in almost every episode, but we're never too worried about him because he has awesome armor and he can take care of himself. In order to add drama to the show, we need Mando to have some vulnerability. In some episodes, the bad guys are given extra strength or skill and spend a scene beating up on Mando a bit. That establishes them as worthy opponents. It wouldn't be great to have Mando oscillating between competence and getting beaten up in every episode though. That would have gotten old pretty quick. Baby Yoda to the rescue. Baby Yoda serves as an Achilles heel for Mando. Baby Yoda is adorable, unarmored, and all the bad guys are coming for him. We're never too worried when Mando is face to face with a mercenary, but when a mercenary is hunting Baby Yoda, that adds some real drama to the show. Everything Mando does is harder and more dangerous because he has chosen to protect Baby Yoda. Does Mando take Baby Yoda into the rough cantina or leave him alone on the ship? Is Baby Yoda ever truly safe? Every task for Mando is more difficult with Baby Yoda on board, but a hero struggling to succeed makes for great watching. Number 7. Baby Yoda Expands the Star Wars Universe A common criticism about Star Wars is that the setting can seem small. Star Wars is supposedly set in a giant galaxy, but most of the characters turn out to be relatives of each other. It seems that at every step, George Lucas chose to make the galaxy smaller rather than larger. Darth Vader built C-3PO. Not that anyone cares about the origins of C-3PO, but if you're gonna tell a C-3PO origin story, why not use it to expand the universe rather than to shrink it? Emperor Palpatine, Padme, and R2-D2 are all needlessly from Naboo. The original Stormtroopers are clones, and they're all brothers or something with Boba Fett. The first two spin-off movies were prequels. Not bad watching, but they spent most of their time establishing stuff we already know about the galaxy. I sincerely believe that Baby Yoda will help expand the Star Wars universe. We didn't get to see many children in the movies, and the children we did see were pretty hard to watch. There's a bit of thematic expansion here, showing a likable child and maybe even a father-son dynamic that isn't completely messed up. We'll see where that goes. Where I think this show will do the most work in expanding the universe is with all the unanswered questions around Master Yoda. Master Yoda is a core character in Star Wars, but since he isn't blood relatives with all the other characters, and we don't know his origins, this is a great place to start to expand the galaxy. Maybe we'll get to see new worlds and species and cultures. Due to the centrality of Master Yoda, all this expansion can be done in a way that still feels like it belongs in Star Wars. I'm not saying that the showrunners won't mess this up and introduce some dumb stuff, but there's a ton of potential here. I don't think Master Yoda was born on Naboo or Tatooine. He came from somewhere else in the galaxy, from a species and a culture that we haven't really seen yet. I think Baby Yoda could be a great bridge between what we already know about the universe and what we still have to learn about it. Nothing is more Star Wars than Yoda, and learning more about his species should be awesome for us viewers and for the Star Wars IP as a whole. Baby Yoda is also serving as a hook to get the Imperial Remnants involved in the story. I think that's a fascinating faction in the galaxy, and I'm excited to learn more about it. I want to see those beat-up Star Destroyers coming out of hiding and chasing after Baby Yoda. I want more villains with crazy plans. Come on, let's expand that universe. And of course, one other thing I expect Baby Yoda to teach us about? The Force. Number 8. Baby Yoda will help explain the Force to us in a beautiful way that we haven't gotten to see since 1980. In The Empire Strikes Back, Master Yoda was poetic. Size matters not. Look at me, judge me by my size, do you? Hmm? Hmm? And well you should not, for my ally is the Force, and a powerful ally it is. Life creates it, makes it grow. Its energy surrounds us and binds us. Luminous beings are we, not this crude matter. Baby Yoda doesn't have midi-chlorians and book learning. Baby Yoda has the Force. Maybe a previous caretaker taught him a little bit, but I think we're gonna get to see the growth of an intuitive Force user. The audience is gonna get to learn more about the Force from Baby Yoda as he discovers it himself. How great is that? 
No stuffy lessons from the Jedi Council, no blood tests, just an adorable being growing up and learning about the light side of the Force. Some people think that the Force is the best part of Star Wars, while some people don't like it so much. Myself, I really like Master Yoda's take on the Force, and I'm hopeful that Baby Yoda will show us more of the good stuff. I admit that I'm a little worried about the Imperial Scientist character trying to count some midi-chlorians, but we'll cross that bridge when we get to it. And the final reason why we all love Baby Yoda? The character design. He is the cutest little buddy. Disney knows a thing or two about making adorable characters. Yoda himself is a cute character, but he was never this cute. Big eyes, big ears, expressive, innocent, a being from the light side of the force indeed. Adorable, and he fits perfectly into the Star Wars universe. The hovering crib is perfect Star Wars. It's awesome technology that's all busted up and makes total sense for the world. That crib is also great for following Mando around on his journeys. In that sense, it reminds me a bit of BB-8. You want the characters to be able to keep up with each other, but it never made sense to me that R2-D2 was able to even move in sand dunes or on Dagobah. That crib is great. I love the way that the show is mixing up new and old designs. Familiar enough to make sense, and new enough to expand Star Wars. Baby Yoda is such a great way to include an adorable and lovable creature into Star Wars. Jam an Ewok or Porg into Star Wars, and people start accusing you of trying to sell toys. Put Baby Yoda into Star Wars though, and people start to demand Baby Yoda figures. Of course Star Wars needed a Baby Yoda. Within a week of The Mandalorian being launched, folks were making their own versions of Baby Yoda using every medium available. I was so happy to find this STL file of Mando and Baby Yoda. As we're getting closer and closer to being finished here, I've come to really appreciate this model. One artist sculpted the Mandalorian in his Episode 2 armor, and another artist sculpted Baby Yoda in his Episode 2 crib. And a third clever person stuck the two together. I'll throw the Thingiverse links up in the description. That third person actually had a really clever way of making that crib fly. Just stuck it right on to Mando's cloak there. A lot of times, flying models are kind of annoying because you need like a clear flight stand for them, but this is a great way to do it. It looks awesome. It looks natural. As things are coming together on the model here, I'll tell you that I've seen six episodes of the show so far. By the time that you're watching this, something that I said may be hilariously wrong. But hey, that's part of the fun. The show has gotten us invested in these characters and in this world. We want to know what's going to happen next. We've all got these theories and hopes for the show, and that's a beautiful thing. So far, I'm really liking the show. I think that the pairing of the Mandalorian and the Baby Yoda is absolutely genius. Such a solid foundation for a show. They're fun and watchable, and there are so many ways that the story can expand. So many mysteries that we want answered, and so much cool stuff to see. I also really like the costume and set design for this show. I love how there's a mix of familiar stuff and brand new stuff. For the first several episodes, all of the spaceship designs were new to me, but they all felt like Star Wars. When they included familiar vehicles like the ATST and the Jawa Crawler, they gave them a fresh coat of paint to make them look awesome. I'm also loving all of the alien species that are inhabiting the Outer Rim planets these days. Great Star Warsy stuff. If I were to point out a few things that I didn't immediately like, I thought the Mandalorian Enclave was a bit concerning. I'm not sure if I'm on board with this. It's like a town of NPCs from a video game, where everyone stands in their spots and waits for the hero to return to upgrade their armor. Also, the writers established early that the NPC Mandalorians are available as a deus ex machina if Mando ever really gets into trouble. We'll see how that all plays out. It also felt like there were a lot of cameos and characters played by actors who were just a bit too famous. I like all of the people who were cast, it just bugs me a bit that I recognize so many folks from their other work. I guess that's just personal preference though, but it would have been cool if they dug up lesser known actors and actresses for this. So this was the first top 10 or top 9 list or whatever that I've done on this channel. At its core, Goober Town Hobbies is a hobby channel, we do projects. Normally when I'm talking, I'm talking about the work that my hands are doing, but in this case I just love Star Wars and Baby Yoda so much that there was no time to talk about anything else. Now I did do this top 9 list a bit ironically, but I thought it would be a fun twist to give you something more interesting to listen to while I work through this little tribute. 
Thanks to Longer3D for sending me this cool printer to test out. If you're curious, it's the Orange 30 resin printer. I think this print turned out pretty great, especially since I just started using the printer and I haven't had time to really dial in the settings yet. Resin printing has gotten really good and really affordable too. It took me very little effort to make this model, and I think he looks great. There's so many awesome files out there that inspire me to keep on crafting and printing. I'm going to load that printer right back up and keep on making stuff. Well, if you like what you see, please like and subscribe. Here on Goobertown Hobbies, I always follow my passions. I craft and paint things that grab hold and won't let go. If you're liking the channel and you want to get even more involved, I have a Patreon page and an Instagram. Or just tell a friend about the channel, they might like it too. There's a lot of really great projects coming up that I'm excited to share. I can't tell you about them just yet, but soon, soon. Anyway, that does it for this episode. As always, thank you so much for watching.